do you play trading card games? Of course you do. That's why you're listening to slash watching this thing. If you want to save money on your trading card purchases, we have a promo link uh, over at 50cards.shop. Enter the promo code at night to get 5% off your order. Hey everybody, and welcome to Nexus at Night, your weekly Vanguard podcast. I'm Atlas. I'm Matt. I'm Rupier. Did I just say every bloody? Yeah, yeah I was going to make so I was going to say something about vampires, I don't know. <sighs> I want to do your podcast. Um so talking about it's not it's 90 degrees in Los Angeles right now. I live on the second floor apartment. I'm delirious. But so you're having a great time. I'm having a gr- I am bro, I am straight up having a great time. It's the opposite of that meme. We're talking about uh uh the idea of interactivity in Vanguard, uh, which is something that has been a long uh, period of contention as long as the game has existed for the most part. Um, and then also By interactivity, do you mean like things that affect your, like affect game plans or do you mean like G guards or guardians in any way that, in, that prevent your opponent or make your opponent think, change the way they do things? Like I suppose like direct interaction or like, Strategic interaction. I suppose we should probably define that before we get into it, right? That's kind of what I'm asking, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's Um, a a difficult definition and one that gets constantly argued about and I think kind of confused on. Um, I think some people, like, have kind of different ideas of what interaction means to them. Um, Like, if you ask a Magic player what interaction means, they'll be like, well... I want to be able to kind of like force my opponent to think about my options on the, my opponent's turn and kind of play with those options in mind. And, you know, that kind of like builds an entire like, ter- like, you know, that like that defines player skill, right? It's kind mm-hmm. of like thinking about these things. And you give us very similar in that respect where you have things you can do on your opponent's turn and your opponent has certain lines that can play through or around those uh, interactions, right? Uh, but Vanguard doesn't have that in kind of a specific sense. Mm-hmm. Vanguard, you're basically saying like, oh, well, can I either do something on my turn that changes how my opponent can act, right? Mm-hmm. Or do I have a guardian skill that makes it so my opponent has to kind of prepare for or think about the result of that? Mm-hmm. Um, I... I think in Vanguard's case in particular, you have uh, just by virtue of whatever clan you're playing, mm-hmm. your your opponent is kind of half expecting what's coming. Oh, I see Narukami, I see Kagero, I see Deer Chronicle. They have the ability to do this thing. So from turn three uh, onward, I now have to keep in mind that they could drop a header around, drop a Denial Griffin, drop a... Uh, mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. drag him um, and fuck up my board. <laughs> I mean, even uh, now with heal guardians, heal guardians can matter a lot if you try to pressure early. That's true. Um, but there's not really a direct consequence in that turn. That's more of an indirect consequence where it, it, you know, it either slows you down or shuts off your turn. And then you usually feel the consequence of that play turns later. It's not like uh, there's not a tangible effect that you're feeling as the player by ha- as opposed to having the opponent go, all right, that big thing that you're restanding three times is dead. Basically, you're not flipping solemn judgment on your opponent. <laughs> Dimensional prison, whatever. Um, I feel like more people would get solemn judgment. Oh, sure. I don't know. I, I, I just figured it was a more uh, accurate description because it has to do with attacking, but That's neither here nor there. (laughs) Yeah, as Uh, far as, like, kind of direct interaction on your opponent's turn, other than Guardians, the only real card that does that, I think, is the original Dark Face. Yeah. Like, one of the few cards that triggers when your opponent just does something. And there's not, not, as far as I know, no other ones that, like, trigger just by your opponent doing something. Yeah. Even something like Freeze Ray has to get hit. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, everything is battle phase kind of consequence or a, a guardian skill. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it should be noted that Darkface had shown up in Worlds twice 
uh, winning the whole thing. And like it was noted both times by the that player that like this was the important card because it like impeded my opponent from doing what they wanted to do. You can original like, darkness. Original dark. I only yeah. remember the one time with when Gold Paladin was everywhere in premium. So that happened twice in Giera, and it was mostly on the latter half of it. But you had like Gold Paladin being Gold Paladin, and then Mega Colony was a weird silver bullet for it. We're not talking about Order Colony. This is something else. This uh, was back when premium was shit, and Gold Paladin could just ride to grade three while you were at grade one in stride. Yeah. Oh, this was like the beginning of V, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you had that, that the and then you also had, you had like late <laughs> well, G also. That that I see. When did that happen in late G? I, I think it was when Overwhelm came out. I think so, yeah. Uh, uh, so like GBT. I was, but I, don't, I didn't think they were playing Dark Face. But yeah, no, that was... The last time Mega Colony was meta, like before it was a specific counterpick to Golds, and like right now was with Redora. I don't remember that deck playing original Dark Face. Maybe it had it as like a backup or something, because I remember seeing it in a deck list. I do not remember any of this. I are you confusing with Dark Face Gridora? <laughs> yeah, because like Gridora so. does have Dark Face in her name and like her skill to just shut out an entire column would be extremely relevant. I don't remember. And Either way, counter last stuff. My um, point is that this, I think, is the only card that just like has an effect that procs when your opponent does something. Mm -hmm. Like they've never printed another effect like this, as far as I know. And <clears throat> I, I wonder if they kind of regretted making a card like Dark Face. It would be. I mean, I think. Darkface is not a good card, but <clears throat> can totally shut down some decks sometimes, mostly mm -hmm. spikes, uh, because spikes need to remove the unit, at least at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know. it seems like something they didn't want to, like, they like dip their toe in that pool and they're like, maybe we should not do that. This goes uh, nowhere good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I always thought they should try that again. Like, I feel like it'd be interesting where... So, like, early G Mega Colony, it was like, pick two things and then rest them and stun them. And then if they're still rested at the end of the turn, you draw cards, whatever. It, mm -hmm. it just wasn't... Uh, I had the idea to... It, it was almost like soft locking where you go, I pick that circle and the next time something shows up there, it gets tripped. Like, you call it webbing or something. They never did that, obviously, but um, they, like, there, there were the cradle markers that came later, but mm -hmm. that was also after the fact. You couldn't place a cradle marker in battle phase. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Can they do that now? I don't think so. They, they have not think... supported the cradle play style. Yeah. Okay. All right. So and they, they do have things that's, like, on play. So if they have something that can, like, call things during battle phase, then you can. Yeah, like, the furthest Vanguard has gone on with interaction has been, you know, battle phase interruptions with Guardian skills and then, like, floodgate effects. So, like, Gradora obviously is the one everyone's thinking about right now, but uh, early V, there was the, uh, shoot, what was that dragon called? The one that stopped you from riding. Zombaku? Yeah, Zombaku, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's usually floodgate effects, like, you can't ride... Uh, you know, can't call from hand in the face, of, or can only call from hand with Gridora. Mm -hmm. I guess, like, deleting, technically, if you couldn't ride over it and get rid of the deletion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's usually stuff like that. And then, free, yeah, free Dark Face is the only... Mm -hmm. And Dark Face, so far, has been the only card that, like, actively interrupts your opponent as they're trying to make plays. And you see a lot of uh, Vanguard players who, uh, y you know, came from Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic, uh, which um, I was learning, I, I was watching, a, what is it, MBT, I think who does History of Yu-Gi-Oh! And he was talking oh, about... Simo and MBT, yeah. Simo yeah. yeah. So he was talking about around the time of like 2012, 2013, the meta for Yu-Gi-Oh! was so toxic that there was this mass exodus of players and a lot of them ended up in Vanguard around mm -hmm. that time um so it was one of those things 
He what? goes on to make fun of Vanguard right after that, I think. Oh, he does. But I, I, I'm just saying, like, seeing it from the other side. Because I was one of those people. Or, like, Insectors were too much for me to handle. I left. And then he's like, around this time, I was like, oh, shit, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, basically, Vanguard exists because Yu-Gi-Oh! was a shit game in 2013. I mean... There's like the only one of the few ways you can actually break into the US CCG market is you need other games to be poor and yeah. then for like to like be not fun or have a bad yeah. format or whatever, and then you'll kind of get new players because people are looking for something else to do. And mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh players to by and large refuse to go to Magic. Yeah. Um, like it's a weird, it's a weird rivalry. I, I'm yeah. not sure why. I mean, plenty of like old school Yu-Gi-Oh legends have gone to Magic and done, been quite successful. Um, but uh, for, for the most part, there's a, a lot of them have a resentment toward Magic players. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I digress. What I what I'm saying is that um, you have this like almost a latent uh, desire for that kind of interactivity. Like even in Yu Gi Oh, the ability to like set traps or uh, in a more modern sense, set, set negates. There's that sense of like give and take. Whereas with Vanguard, it's about hunkering down, surviving the opponent's turn, so you can do it, do your turn again. Um, I don't think Vanguard will ever be that kind of game. And like, mm -hmm. I think when people want interaction, they should really kind of figure out what exactly what kind of interaction they want. Mm -hmm. um, Vanguard's not really built like Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic, mm -hmm. and uh, like. The developers of Vanguard, I think, have made it pretty clear that they just want you to play your cards and attack, and then do your do your skills and feel cool, and yeah, then yeah. send it over to your opponent. Your opponent plays their cards and you know does their skills. Yeah, like bl blitz orders are they're like compromise half heartedly to try and scratch that itch for some people, but they um, they they're really not. Uh, they I don't think they want to do blitz orders that tangibly affect the board unless it like something shit goes down or they're like we're hemorrhaging people we gotta you know up the gas or something i i think it's all like for a long time we're gonna have things where it's just stuff about like getting giving power to your vanguard or whatever um mm -hmm. getting right. a bunch of shit. i mean we now have like the fox order with tamayura which is a permanent minus 10 mm -hmm. for like the turn i have one blitz order in Kyrie. <laughs> Which one is that? Uh, the one that gives your Vanguard 30k if it was hit this turn. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, a 30k the, shield. I'm like, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For the rest of the turn, at least, right? No. Um, oh, it's just. God, that. no. Could you imagine if it just made your Vanguard 43 for the rest of the turn? That would be yeah. wild. So I, I don't know. I, I imagine they're not going to do this unless, you know, maybe another 10 years that Vanguard survives, it ends up moving toward that. Yeah. Um, but for yeah. now, I don't see it happening. Yeah, and then, like, it also kind of turns into, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! problem, where there's so much interaction now that your deck is either... You can play through three hand traps, or you just, like, lose. There's too much interaction, right? Yeah, um, there's just, like, every turn one board is to try and make it so your opponent cannot play the game as much as humanly possible. So it's still and, a Mystic Mine. How hard is that? <laughs> just play Flunder every time. And just True. like set up your full lockout. Your opponent just won't have whichever hand trap is bat for Flunder. Droll. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Vanguard would ever want to... Uh, I imagine if they were, were to do this, it would just be... They would start with Dragon Empire. Because that's usually yeah. where they go when they need like mm -hmm. blowing stuff up. Um, I like exactly Denial Griffin as far as interact. Uh, that and I think it was Belrog, Belog, which one? Oh, the one uh, that if you the GB one if guard if it, at the end of the attack if the attack yeah. not hit retire. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Belog retire arrested. Belog. 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 Yeah, it's like at the end of the battle if it didn't hit then retire arrested rear guard. So yeah, I think those two cards exactly pr are fine. I feel like anything else, and you're bordering on that feeling of like, oh, my opponent just like shut down my entire turn, and I can't do anything. That's not fun. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't imagine they're going to have like a thing where 
you discard it like not a not a G guard because there are, is a finite amount of them. You want to use those heals for other stuff sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. but just like they're not going to do like a grade one where it's like discard this, blow something up. I don't think it's going to be that. Um, yeah. I I I do like that they have so um, Narukami. They're playing you know Eradicator stuff again, mm -hmm. and they have grade two from like way the fuck before where it was like when you intercept with it. Uh, counter blast or an eradicator and retire an opponent's standing rear guard. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pain in the ass to play against, but it takes like there is some interactivity there because if you, the opponent, go, I don't see any er eradicators in his damage, he can't pull that off, or I can blow this up before it becomes a problem, or something like that. It, it, it's like a light amount of interactivity that's not. Yeah. Basically, like your opponent needs some opportunity to like play around it, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, with the Dial Griffin, you have like on attack skills, you have your other column, you have like your Vanguard ability. So there are times when like getting something blown up is inconvenient, but not like turn ending. You know, it can be turn ending if you like put all your eggs in one basket, or you you'll know. also. You'll also notice that the uh, the clans that have the most convenient access to uh, denial griffining are not some kind of like oppressive metaphors. Kagero, Narukami, kind of. But uh, I mean, Narukami's problem is stunverse, right? Because that's yeah. just a hand rip card, and we don't like those. Yeah, but like Kagero and Gear Chronicle both have the ability to like just have direct access to. Uh, the denial griffin like effect, but they're not running around causing trouble. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, other clans that have access to removal on the opponent's turn, um, things like Great Nature, because I always have to go toward that. Pale Moon has one now that's like way easier to pull off than before. Um, mm -hmm. I think does Di have one? I feel like it does. I gotta go back and look. I, I have this written down somewhere. Um, <laughs> but like a, a lot of clans have access to that, but they're multi card combos too get this mm -hmm. to work um and it, that that's not what makes the clan win it just is a it's a it's a boon it's a sure. tool yeah which i do want them to make more like utility like blitz orders or guardians just to like make survival easier without like completely just stopping your opponent's turn like i feel like that's the sweet spot you want to get to because you know put you know, people feel bad when they're not allowed to, like, do their thing. You know, that's why everyone hates stun deck so much. It's just like, oh my god, I can't... You know, I just want to, like, play solitaire for five minutes and do my combo. You know, and Floodgate stop that. You know, same thing with decks that can just put up, like, a ton of interruptions in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, no one likes that shit. Yeah, so, but they're, like, outs to Floodgates in Yu-Gi-Oh!, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that's a problem with Vanguard right now is because there's no interaction, no way to like stop your opponent from doing anything. Then like floodgates are probably like too oppressive. Yeah, you know, like there's no easy way to counter Gradora if your deck doesn't have a built-in way to like mass call from hand. Yeah, it's um. There's also like that psychological aspect to it, right? Like mm -hmm. you just kind of have to sit there and be like, "All right, it's coming." Mm -hmm. <sighs> It's yeah. coming. And the Fuck. fact that they have Brilliant Blister as well. Oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. Which is uh, an annoying card for sure. Yeah. I think uh, with an uh, Ambush Dexter, Spikes can play around exactly one Brilliant Blister. And then if they have two, you just lose. Which I is mean, very cool. Brilliant Blister isn't searchable, is it? No. Okay, so... Unless they, for some reason, have cradle things and they cradle a grade one. But that mm. would be wild. But basically, no. Mm -hmm. But that's why they just, you know, play full copies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think. Of like... That card is crazy. Oh, yeah, it is. yeah, it's pretty wacky. Uh, allows them to be... I, I don't think they need to hit it. But it's it's just very good. It's very I mean, good I, the, the problem is the is the deck around it, right? Mm -hmm. It always has been. Yeah, I think if they were, got rid of Gridora, Brilliant Blister is like fine. 
Like again, it's in that sweet spot of being like it can like severely inhibit or like stop your turn, but you also have opportunities to play around it. Yeah. Like V Brilliant Blister only works again only works if your Vanguard is resting, so you know, there's that. You don't necessarily and not no. every deck necessarily like restands their rear guard, so you know, there are ways around Brilliant Blister, but you combine that with a really powerful floodgate and it's just like ugh. Yeah, but I mean that's not really a good solution for spikes. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you kinda have to attack with your Vanguard right, right. to set stuff up. But Yeah. But, you know, I'm just saying like broadly, Brilliant Blister isn't a huge problem. It doesn't stop like every deck. There are some solutions around it. So on its own, I think Brilliant Blister is fine. It's just that existing alongside a floodgate. Yeah. Which Ghidorah plus Blister, good luck. Mm-hmm. You know, that seems like the bigger problem with Vanguard right now is just, like, floodgate effects are very oppressive. And, like, every time we've had a very good and consistent one, they usually end up at, like, the top of the format. So, like, Zombaku was really strong because it, like, shut down OTT at the time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we have Ghidorah right now. Uh, Do you think... It also stopped people from stacking Force Markers as well, which is mm -hmm. quite nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is like a way to slightly increase interactivity without, uh, you know, busting the game open? <laughs> I think what they should have done, and I've said this before, like years ago, <laughs> that I would like to see more like just like small guard skills on certain rear guards. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's just, like, plus 5k here, like, plus 5k shield for no reason, in yeah. addition to whatever other skill, just yeah. so you have, like, even if that card is slightly worse, like, on, like, text-wise than another card, it's the bonus of running it is that it's a bigger shield than this card. And, yeah. like, we come to this problem, especially in D format right now, where there's, you just, like, if it's not a trigger, it's not shield. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're worth nothing. And grade ones are now 5k, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're just so low on shield in D format. And attacks yeah. are so big. You know, I think, like, something probably needs to be done with, like, orders and blitz orders because decks that are relying on that have, like, even less shield value now because even if your higher grade units aren't worth very much, sometimes an extra 5k makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's just like having or having orders be worth nothing in your hand is, like, really bad. I think it would have been interesting if they... if orders could have been played in the guard circle as opposed to having to be put in the order zone, because then they could have, like, let's say you could guard with an order, and on paper it doesn't have any, any shield or anything, but... Let's say Zorga, for example, had an ability. It's like, when you place an order, this unit gets plus 5k till end of battle. Or something. Mm -hmm. um, that would be an interesting way to... like, yeah. Or even better, when you play an order, this unit gets plus 5k for the turn. Mm -hmm. Right? So now when you guard with orders, it you lose the order that you would be doing for Alchemagic, but you make, you know, you make the zombie boy chunkier for the turn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Whether also, it be like, your order or your opponent's. And that you know, blitz orders have the opposite problem where their only guard, only value is guarding, which means like they can't be used as a strategic piece. And since a lot of the orders just like give you power anyways, kind of wish like blitz orders could be played on both turns. I wish they could too. Like quick play spells are some of the most interesting cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. For that exact mm -hmm. reason, you can use them in a yeah. variety of situations. Yeah, although they'd have to walk a very fine line with like blitz orders, mm. as if that was the case. And probably just probably get into the battle phase of either turn like that. Mm -hmm. As they've as they've uh, kind of constructed blitz orders at least recently, they a lot of them don't even work, even if you could play them on your turn. Yeah. Yeah. They, what they probably have to do is like change that ruling, where like now instead of just your opponent's battle phase, it's both, and then start making more blitz orders, with that, which is fine. Um, I mean, there's not really a timing for it, though, right? You'd have to like invent a timing. Yeah, maybe it's like when something attacks, you can play a Blitz Order. So you maybe. add, like, 
and uh, in each battle step, you add kind of like an order phase before guarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or order step or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I feel like that would be fairly easy to implement without much damage. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's what we think. Um, but uh, yeah, did we have anything else we wanted to say about this? Or no, no. So why don't we do some ban list predictions? Because we're getting near the end of uh, Springfest era or season. We have BRO coming up. Ten days. Ten days. Yeah. Ban list should be coming out next Friday. So what do we want to see? What do we think is going to happen? Well, I assume we're at least going to get the Japanese ban list. Yeah. As like silly as the Japanese ban list is, we're probably going to get it. But I do think they'll add some extra stuff for mm-hmm. um, premium and V premium here. Yeah. Just like before. Mm-hmm. And so I guess there's like what we want to get hit and what we expect to get hit. I know Bushrod is like more than like m- more likely to errata things rather than hit them, which um, is horrible. Mm-hmm. Which, which is kind of a pain because y- you said in our uh, in the dust video, Rupier. That was that once. What they the, have. They've like, errated a couple of cards, but yeah, they've errated a couple of cards. But like, Rivier was like once, and like other erratas have either been like pre-release, like dust, or like the five million infinite loops that they keep accidentally making. Yeah, and that no, but I, I, I mean, like, uh, they're more inclined to do something like that as opposed to Konami, which only does it after it's been so long on the ban list that they're like, this is getting annoying. Should we, like, fix it and then release it? it- mm. Mm. I think the... What's, I think what Busher I think Bushiro does hate banning cards. Yeah. But I think they what they would what they're going to do is they're going to be like, oh, we're going to put Gridorta to not actually solve anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they're going to be like, oh, that's good enough. Or they're going to be like, um, we're going to choice something stupid or put, like... They're yeah. going to do something that just doesn't make sense. This is what yeah. I want. But at least for premium. Uh, Gridora, Gridora Stride to one. Um, Stunverse to one. Ginny, uh, Nightmare Doll Ginny, the one that allows you to loop Alice, banned. Um, and fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to do anything with, uh, with Percival, because now we have Holy Shine Liberator, and I feel like that's mm-hmm. going to get ridiculous real fast but uh yeah like pre-banning percival like is a maybe pre-banning odysseus might be something Mm. i don't know if they need to ban it maybe put it to one or two we haven't even seen if it does anything yet in terms of like like, additive standards yeah but like on like on paper resolving a single odysseus is like a plus three I just want Gridora banned, but what I think they're going to do, and mm-hmm. this is actually even more useless than putting Gridora to one, is they're going to, like, choice restrict the stupid dragon in the book, and they're oh, going to yeah. find a different order to play, and we're going to be like, well, this did nothing. Yeah. Like, we just not touching the problem card. They're going to just ignore Gridora as a problem. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. Gridora should just straight up be banned. Like, I think that this card is, like, this card stopping G Guardians is pretty unreasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, if you want to say, oh, that kills the deck, I don't care. <laughs> I, yeah, you, I do not care. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cannot care. Yeah, like, I think my thoughts are like, yeah, just kill Gridora. I'm not playing premium right now, but it seems like everyone's just tired of this card. Uh, probably should kill Percival, maybe in both formats. I don't know if it's going to be a huge problem in premium with I'm uh, to- Holy Shine. I'm I'm willing for at least in premium just to like gold rock. Okay, so yeah, at the very least, like killing Percival and V, just because the instant it was playable in Gurgut again, the deck like became top meta, and so yeah. we're going to like we are going to kill like bluish flames as a whole as a consequence. But like whatever, I feel like. Either that or, like, choice-restricting Percival and Holy Shine. I don't know if they're going to preemptively choice-restrict a card that hasn't come out yet. 
I have no idea how to handle the gold situation. They basically printed Percival 2 through 5 after putting Percival to 1. Yeah. I don't know. I guess they could also errata the fucking dragon so that you can't get, like, more Excel gifts, but... Who knows? That's one of those things where, like, really? You didn't see this coming? Yeah, like, <laughs> this, car this card is just... Like, the upcoming Holy Shine is just such an obvious problem when... Like, the deck is already very powerful, and then you have something that just really obviously makes it stronger. I do think they'll do something to Golds and Prism, at least in V, but I'm not convinced what they'll do will be enough. Yeah. Uh, let's see. For Prisms, you should probably just, like, either hit it to one or just ban Rosa outright. That's, like, your main plus engine. It's how you get everything in your drop z or in your bind zone. Own, like, it's usable in duos, too, so, like, Touching Vert in any way isn't going to matter once that card comes out. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, like for Prisms, I think just ban Rosa outright. That probably like hurts the deck enough for it to be unplayable. And we can like try to play other Bermuda variants. I would prob I would also like unban Meep if I really wanted to, but just because Melody wasn't doing anything and we got that stupid ban for no reason. I know that Meep is the actual name, but all I can imagine is Beaker from the Muppets. Mm -hmm. Meep. Meep. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, they choice... Like, last time, they choice restricted, like, Rosa, Coutier, and uh, Ellie, and everyone was just like, okay, so we keep Rosa, and Prism is still a top deck. So I think it's time to just actually ban the problem for that. Um, What else is, like, strong in V... Is there anything else that's, like, maybe problematic in V? I don't think so. Like, I, I think you've said this before, Matt, but they're, like, the gatekeepers, right? Yeah. Where, like, the rest of the format's fine. It's just these two are such a pain, head and shoulders above everything else. So, um, this is really strong, but it hasn't done anything because nobody had the car, the expensive card. Assault? Yeah, so I, I just think you let it rock. Screw it. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> let it yeah. let, let's see what it can do. Yeah. Yeah, right? But, like, you know, golds were really oppressive for a long time. Then they died down a bit once they got rid of Percival and Gurgut together. Then it came back, immediately started oppressing the meta again. Prism has just been consistently meta since the, that deck came out. And then it survived the last ban list and is still arguably like top two. So that needs to go. And then I guess we'll just see what happens with the rest of the meta after that. Mm -hmm. And then. Standard, I don't think, needed to be touched at all, but I guess we're just going to get a hit to Magnolia and Bastion for some reason. I think there is a reason to hit Magnolia, but mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the correct way. But um... Oh, it's the correct way. Trust me. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, like... it, does, it does do a fair bit of damage. I'm just saying it's like, it, yeah, it might be a little much, but I do think Magnolia needed a little, you know, little slap. Yeah. Yeah, I said this when I was talking about the bandless video during the TCG presentation. Like, out of all of the decks that you're going to hit, Magnolia was probably it, and this was the also the hit that made the most sense. You know, it kind of sucks that Magnolia has to like die like this, but it is probably the strongest deck, and this is the most logical hit. I uh, do like hitting Bastion, and let me tell you why. It's because sometimes Bastion goes first. And hits turn four, and you just die. True. Like they're just like oh, I'm just gonna kill you now. Thanks. Yeah. Like what they play the, uh, the dark strain is yeah. Right. Dark is strain. That one is that one, but one. Yeah. Uh, the one that lets you boost with great threes. Yeah. So the, the order is comically bad. The order yes. that lets you do it is so bad. Gonna, like so many people were like, oh, why would right. you hit dark strain? Like they have the order. I'm like. I'm looking at all these JP lists, and nobody plays the fucking order. The, the yeah, order was played in, like, out. one list ever. And that was, mm -hmm. like, everyone else... Like, like, they have tried it. multiple times to make Dark Strain replacements, and none of them have been played. Dark Strain's just good. But yeah. It, it, it razor, right? Sim the simplest, it, it's just thing. Mm -hmm. Fills the, like, the body, and then gives everything boost. Of course you'd want it. Right. What's that yeah. grade three? The grade three that Bastion has that gets, like, extra drive checks is so super obnoxious. <laughs> Yeah, we like made fun of that card when it came out in set three. It yeah, turns out like we they... were wrong. Yeah, we, were wrong. we we do that a lot, but I, I mean I that card. It... It's mm -hmm. it, that card is 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 very all in, right? Yeah, and it's hard, but Bastion's like that's fine. 
Yeah. I, <laughs> Especially I, because the great, I guess with the great four Bastion now, you just like restand your whole board anyway, so it doesn't matter that you just rested five units. I don't know. They they, uh, they revealed an order uh, at the time of hearing this yesterday, uh, where where it's like, all right, you play the order, and your your guys can move sideways now. And I'm like, they they already have that. It's called Rahula. Yeah, like like Bushiro has this weird habit of like creating cards that do what previous cards already did, but worse. Yeah, and then like. Go ahead, sorry. If you want a fun drinking game, you take a shot every time they reveal a card that has plus 5k on it. <laughs> oh man, I'm doing I'm doing that on our next set review. Um, <laughs> every time a card not is... do that on our next set <laughs> review. Take like a shot. Come on, no, just like a sip of the drink, right? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the cards they revealed already? Like every card has like plus 5k. Plus yeah. 5k. Okay. Shield doesn't count, otherwise I'm getting alcohol. They're poison. trying really hard not to like power creep any of the cards. But also because they introduced three new trial decks, like the next couple of sets are just going to be first wave support for new archetypes again. I just love that he comes out with a video about dust and then they just fucking make dust in Yeah, but this is like way standard. worse than dust. Even post errata yeah. dust is better than this thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is the point of turning? Like, why does it have to decrease the power to one? Why can't it be zero? They they like, just got it. Just you know, you do attack it. someone that's you know you attack a one power vanguard. Let's say your rearguard is fifteen k, right? They put down a trigger. They're now fifteen thousand and one, which means you need more power to get over it. This is just worse than putting it to zero. Apparently, it's got to be thematic or whatever. Um, <laughs> like, at least Dust also put the grade to one so you couldn't G guard anymore, but that's not a thing in standard, so. Yeah. Oh, and this card has to Soul Blast four different grades, so it's like Chaos Highlander, but like even worse somehow. I don't know what to tell you. I just think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was incredibly amusing. I thought the exact same thing when I saw this car. I was like, huh, it just Good like timing. made dust again, but in a meta, but in a format where like the dust skill has like zero relevance. I'm be honest, I haven't read any of the new cards that they show. Yeah, also, also, I was playing DNF really cool. all day. <laughs> Yeah, and then, like, there's also a weird thing with the current wave of support where apparently this dragon thing is going to have, like, an alternate form that it'll count for Persona Ride, but they're not releasing it until set 7, it seems like. Man, if only they hadn't done that already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... Well, she has some huge cans. Yeah, although this seems to be, like, a thing with the TDs where... The new TD bosses are just going to be weaker versions of what's in the actual set. Like, they have explicitly said this, that they're just going to release, like, better versions of the TD bosses that are more advanced, in quotes. Even so, other, like, so all these TD cards also just count as other units that are in the set because of this. Like, the other... Uh, like, the Revol form dude... I think his mm -hmm. name was Youth, which is or Youth Burke, which is the weirdest fucking name. But yeah, he also has that same thing where like there there's going to be a version called Skyfall Arms, and the Proto Fall that's in the TD counts as it. And they're just going to like put that form in set six, and then they're gonna put like the new form of the dragon in set seven. Which this is a lot. Yeah, that was also something I wanted to talk about. Like, how do you feel about that decision of just like putting worse versions of the boss units in the TDs? What's the problem with the t with the TDs the first time? Weren't they like hugely popular? Yeah, exactly. Like, mm -hmm. like that was kind of the point. Was like not only was it the intro to an overdress or whatever, but it was also like you had a fairly competent deck and like a good base to mm -hmm. start with. If, if they explicitly go. This is the butt version of what's in the actual set. Like, obviously they sugarcoated it. I'm trying to f go find the like picture of on the stream. 
of what they said. I just don't under like who's this TD? Like, so do you even need the TD then? I don't know. So, I mean, like, what they do with Yu Gi Oh, where it's like a couple staples yeah. from the nation or whatever are in the TD. So you have to I mean, they've done it. that in Vanguard forever, right? Yeah. Remember when you had to buy four TDs to get your 12k attacker? Yeah, that was. <laughs> Yes. At least these days, they just put a full playset of playable cards in the TDs. But yeah, like it looks like what they were saying is like the TD is going to have an easy to play version, and then you know the anime version of the card is going to be in the actual set. And then All I right. think let's take TDs... it. Here. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go oh, ahead. Sorry. So the TDs are also introducing like tutorial cards, where basically instead of a skill, they just explain how to play the game. So like. A grade one will have an explanation of what boost is, and hmm. then I think they're also re- releasing expansion packs for the TDs. That, from the picture I was looking at, it looked like they're just going to be replacing those tutorial cards with the same cards but with actual skills this time. And I don't know if that's included with the TD, so like after you're done learning the game, you can have real units, or if that's going to be something separate because I can't read Moon Runes. All right, so I so you don't buy these TDs, and you yeah, just, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's what it is. Is you just don't buy these it's TDs for new players, and that's why they're reprinting the over triggers to go with it. Okay, sure, mm-hmm. whatever, got it. It's another yeah. way to try to get new people, and that's fine. I'm not. Yeah, like I, it. I didn't mind the tutorial cards. Uh, I would need some sort of clarification on how the uh, TD expansions work if those are just like something included in the TD so like you have your tutorial cards and then you have cards with the same name and artwork but with real skills I'll wait for the English announcement and figure out what they mean by that or until yeah. it releases we'll find out mm-hmm. exactly. but yeah uh, the other, but the part where they're just like putting the anime versions of these boss monsters in the actual set and then the TD is just a dumbed down version for new players I mean, I get it. Like, technically speaking, a trial deck is for new players to get into the game. But it is really frustrating that, you know... And I think it makes it harder for people to get into the game when your, like, TD card is just worse than something that's going to be in the set. And that once you learn the game and you get more experience, you have to get this different card now. Yeah, that that is definitely going to be pretty galling. Um, Yeah, because... Even with, like, grade 4s, you can still play the original TD bosses, and they're still competent on their own. Now, here's the, here's the real question I have. Do you think that one of the easy-to-play bosses will be better than one of the advanced bosses? <laughs> I think That's a you very have... good question. It seems entirely possible. I give it 60-40 odds that that is the case. Uh... <laughs> yeah, over, under, one half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think point five is the right over under for that. Mm-hmm. So, so you have a coin flip chance of that being the case. Yeah, because like so is it is it, it is so there is one or there isn't one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because like the proto fall arms with like the revolt dress ability where you can like ride a new where you can re ride into a new unit. You know that seems like pretty basic. It doesn't have a cost. It's just at the end of the battle if you have the revolt form in hand, you can ride it. So, there is a possibility that, like, Protofall might be better than Skyfall, depending on how the cost works out for Skyfall. And before they're all great, do we know that they're all grade threes in the new set, or? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if we know ex- explicitly if they're all grade threes, but they are making a new form of Nirvana for some reason. Sure, why not? Why not? Yeah, it seems like we're just back to pre- uh, uh, overdress where we're just releasing new boss units every set again. Mm-hmm. I guess it's a very easy way for them to just like not advance the meta too much by just releasing wave one support every set. Right. Old habits die hard, I guess. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because we also got got confirmed on today's stream that like one of the anime characters is going to have this new card. And that's going to be an archetype in set seven. So, like, we already have one new ride line confirmed for set seven, at least. 
just once I want a card to support a deck I already have that's not accidental. Mm -hmm. You know? Nah, no. <laughs> I mean, you're playing Magnolia and Prison. Those are both, like, anime archetypes. You have a pretty good shot of getting direct support. Yeah, it's someone the... like me that just collects all these bad decks that where I'm doomed. Well, I, I kind of had to put Magnolia on ice because of uh, the fucking... Yeah. Uh, yeah, but like, set, yeah, but, like, Set 6 is going to support it, so you're, like, probably mm -hmm. going to be fine. So I just... Inlet Pulse was so simple and good, and... Uh, I I don't know I I've I've tinkered around with uh, using it in great nature as a, mm -hmm. a way to get soul and still do that same thing of like you get a draw off of it end phase. Uh, but apparently the new card is in set seven is going to be like a CEO and it's just going to have a flying fortress as a as presumably a set order. So I'm imagining like. Amaterasu from OTT meets Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> yeah, but it's like a dude. All right. <laughs> um, uh, well, that was, that, was, that was weird predictions. What do you guys think is going to happen? What do you want to happen um, yeah. for that list? Uh, do you think that Vanguard should have more interactivity? Leave a like, leave a comment, or tweet at us at Nexus at Night on Twitter. Or Instagram. We don't really do much with the Instagram. Where can they find the rest of us? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Wiggums, 2 gs 2 gs You can find me at Plasma Eclipse. You can find me at Atlas Novak, Twitter and Instagram, or you can follow my other podcast uh, at Generation Dan on Twitter or Generation underscore Dan on Instagram. New episodes of that every Thursday. Uh, if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash nexus at nights. Uh, new episodes of Tangents, which is just where we talk about whatever the hell we want uh, every Monday. Uh, sometimes we have a guest. Um, thanks to Darren Cole, Josh Jeremy, and Mule for being $10 patrons. What are you holding, Matt? Hmm? What's the card? What was the card? Uh, <laughs> the, Blitz. Okay. the Blitz Order. Okay. Well, uh, there's there was that. There's uh, merch and playmat stuff. That's in the description slash show notes. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. And until next time, I was Atlas. I'm still Matt. I'm Root Beer. Have a good night, everybody.